I have sometimes people that come up to me, they're so frustrated that their employees or their reports are not doing it. And yeah, he said how many times? Three? Okay. You got four more to go at least. Very fast paced, fast moving person. But I, you know, the, the walks that we have every morning with my dogs is my, is my real quiet time. It's a bit of my thinking time. And yesterday I just took the day off because I was feeling, feeling like I needed it. And I have to say it's, I think Gino describes it really well. If you can imagine a glass with sand in it, if you're continually moving, that water is murky. You can't see. It's only when you sort of take time out and you allow that water or the sand to settle that you get the clarity of vision. And I'm feeling quite clear after a day off yesterday. And so sometimes a day is all that it takes, but it's kind of a breaking that pattern and going, it's time to stop. <laughs> So hello and welcome to another edition of Better Business, Better Life. Today I am joined by fellow professional EOS implementer, Alkis Krasis, who is joining me from Tampa in Florida, so another international guest. Um, just to give you a little, little bit of background, so Alkis was basically um, a business owner for 30-odd years. He's a co-founder of EVOS um, Good Health Food, I think it's called. Uh, he can tell you yeah. more about that. Um, and just recently became an EOS implementer because he realized the effect that EOS had on his business. So welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Deborah. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, look, I'm really looking forward to it. We've had a bit of a chat briefly before this session. I'm really looking forward to you sharing your story with the listeners. Yes, so tell yeah. I'd love to, um, us who are sharing, I've, I've been dabbling with a lot of the principles and coaching all my life in all my businesses and also outside of businesses, volunteering and helping others, anybody who wanted help. Yeah. And, um, over the years, I realized that that was my, my passion and, and my business has started to reflect that An example at Evo's, we started calling coaching and wowing our guests, the, found, the two pillars, the foundation of what we build our business and our culture around. And, um, and I've been through all of it as an entrepreneur. I've been through all the ups and downs from a startup going public and running a multi-million dollar business to closing underperforming locations and wondering <laughs> where the next payroll is going to come from. And you learn through all of it. You learn about people and you learn about um, business that way. And I, I actually and my, had a guess. Sorry, yeah. I actually had a guest the other day who actually described um, entrepreneurship for me as being on a roller coaster in the dark. And I thought that was such a great description. <laughs> I've heard a good one too. It's yeah? like trying to control a tiger by its tail. Mm, yep. <laughs> yeah. y yes. Okay. Um, so anyway, and, but as most entrepreneurs have found out through their journey, you learn the most when you face adversity and challenges. Mm -hmm. And, and one of my biggest life lessons is that in every setback, it leads you to a setup. And it was actually during a time of challenge like that, that I discovered EOS and I immediately fell in love with the ideas. Everything resonated to me, both as an entrepreneur, as a trained business owner, as a CEO and founder, all of it. It just made total sense. And I started applying those tools and ideas to my businesses and we've had incredible results uh, mm -hmm. to the point where recently I was able to you know, transform my leadership team in one of my businesses to where I'm spending five, six hours a month and supporting them and i'm using now all my free time to help other entrepreneurs get what they want out of their business yeah that is fantastic so why don't you take us back to the beginning of evos because it's been going for 30 years um where did it start how did you you know how did you get into it and some mm -hmm. of the challenges that you faced along the way sure it started as i was traveling a lot around the u.s to raise money for my other business, which was a real estate business in the early 80s. And as you probably know, in the early 80s, there was a big financial crisis. Yes. And as I was traveling around the US, I was eating very healthy and it was hard to find healthier food on the run. And that's how the idea was born. There has to be a concept like this and there wasn't. So. I got together with my two best friends and 
back to the EOS life, doing what you love with people you love. People you love. And, and, and we started, we started Evos and we, I knew nothing about the restaurant business. I okay. went and got jobs at Wendy's and other restaurants just to learn the business. And in one of those restaurants, a very fine dining restaurant, one day a hostess came to the restaurant and we fell in love. So I ran a setback, a setup. That's where I met my wife. And 24 years later, we're happily married with two beautiful children. And um, yeah, that's how life works. That is fantastic. I love that. What a beautiful love story. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So you said, um, you know, that you had... I guess, been using the, the principles of EOS because nothing in EOS is new, right? There's nothing in there that is kind of like uh, amazingly new. But it, what it does do is it takes all of the really great stuff from these amazing people who've written great books and puts into a simple formula. And you said you were using the kind of the basics of this in the business. But then you decided to actually, you know, read the Traction book and start implementing EOS. Tell mm-hmm. us a bit about that. So, again, the tools once we started understanding and then using the tools, there was a beautiful transformation. In one of my businesses, we doubled in sales in two years. And when we asked our internal team, what was the biggest win? Both times they said using the tools of EOS was the biggest breakthrough they had, not the fact that we had doubled in sales. So that's very telling. The effect that it has, not just as a business owner, but for the entire organization. And to me, that's transformation. That's, that's meaningful because I, I speak often about the hard facts, but also the heart facts, the mm-hmm. things that really matter deep down. Yeah. And these are the things that make my journey worth it when others are coming along and they're coming through their, to their own insights and breakthroughs and realizations and having a beautiful journey along with you. Hmm. So that was that was when you were sort of self implementing and bringing the EOS tools into the business, and I mean doubling in sales is just phenomenal. Um, mm-hmm. But you then actually went and hired an EOS implementer yourself, didn't you? Yes. Why? I did. Why did you do that? Because I didn't know what I didn't know. So I had tried self implementing, mm-hmm. and I was after seeing what that was like. I wanted to see what a professional EOS implementer could do. And the experience is a little bit like being in the gym. I figured if I can work out by myself, okay, I can do some good things. But I know what what happened to me when I hired a trainer Mm -hmm. to train with me. Or I hired a coach back when I was playing soccer to train with me. Things went 10x. Yeah. So, so that's what we did. We, we hired in my other business, Evos, a professional implementer. And within a year, there was transformation. And, you know, being in the restaurant business, it's a lot of hands-on work. And it's for us, too, there was a passion there. There was we're changing the world through healthier fast food, feel great food. And you're deep in it. And to realize that you can still experience your passion and express your passion, but you don't have to be in it 40 hours a a, a week. So I'm down to 10 hours a month. And my team has completely transformed in this year through EOS. And they're going to take EVOs probably much further than I ever would. And I'm so proud of them for, for, for running with it. Running on EOS and running with it. Running on EVOS. (laughs) <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> so, so tell me, I mean, a lot of us as founders, we kind of struggle to let go because, you know, we've built this thing up um, and it's our baby and we we struggle to allow others to kind of step up and, and us let go and let them do what they need to do. Mm. How was that process for you? That's back to what I was saying earlier that in many ways I've been doing EOS all my life. I just didn't know it was called that. Mm-hmm. I always empowered my team to do things, um, but I didn't realize that I was holding on to the to the vine. Right. Even though we delegated a lot and empowered others and lived our values and our culture, 
still I was very involved and I was the source of the knowledge, so to speak, and a mentor. But then what EOS helped me do is realize there is abundance and to allow others to reach their full potential, I got to remove myself from the picture and allow them to be their best version of themselves. So I'm interested um, because, you know, the, the first result of using EOS in self-implantation was double the sales, and that's what a lot of people want. They want that increased income, the increased revenue. But the second, you know, using a professional EOS implementer, you were actually able to free yourself up to do, yes. you know, to, to remove yourself from the business. So yes. there's there's two very different elements there. What what enabled you to take that time out? Because if you were already delegating and elevating and you were already, you know, you already improved the business, what was that key thing that meant you could actually let go of the vine and shift from a 40-day work week or more to 10 hours a month? It was actually doing the work, creating trust with our team, um, working through the accountability chart, all the tools that you learn through the EOS process, the proven process, and creating team health and realizing that these guys have been prepping themselves for this moment. As a matter of fact, I'll never forget when we first sat down with our implementer to work through our accountability chart and my business partner sat in the implementer, I'm sorry, the integrator seat. And one of my managers looked up at the board, pointed to the seat and said, one day I want to have that seat. And a year later, he had it. Mm -hmm. He had it. So I think the transformation that happens when you really go deep in using the tools and working on your mastery and staying humble and keep on learning and allowing others to learn is a beautiful journey. And we're organically, I'm sorry to use the term, we're in the organic and healthy fast food segment, but <laughs> organically happens and naturally. And it was time. It was time. And the other thing was for me realizing that I can affect myself for businesses by being an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. But if I can help other entrepreneurs, then I can affect 40, 50, 100 businesses. And that's, that's my purpose now. I want to, you know, make a change in the world, make a difference in the world. One entrepreneur, one leadership team, one company at a time. Yeah, I'm living the dream. Yeah. 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 And and I think that, you know, you obviously got great benefit out of having an, an EOS implemented yourself and now you're going to offer that same value to other businesses. One of the yes. things that I, th I think it is, because I think what you've just described is you had a good business, right? You had a good business that was doing really well and yet, and yet bringing in an external person could still take it up to the next level. And I think that's what um, having an outside person does is they really do take you a notch up because they're able to perhaps see things that you can't see. Um, they they know the process kind of inside out and, and really help you to go on that journey. I mean, even things yeah. like the accountability chart, a simple tool, but when done well and done with the proven process, it can make mm -hmm. such a huge difference, can't it? Yeah, absolutely. But I also want to say something really personal. I think along the way, as I look back and reflect, my innate way of being was always to be the hero. And perhaps that's why I always mm -hmm. wanted to help and volunteer at the church or the soccer team or be there for my team members at work. Um, and while that's good, that's about you. At some point, you realize that you can be the coach, not the hero. And when you're the coach, it's about the others. It's about bringing value to them and their life. And I would say definitely EOS helped me make that distinction and realize that yeah. there's abundance. You give it away, stay humble, and uh, let others experience the best version of themselves. Mm. 
So you're you're fresh out of EOS boot camp, but you're going to obviously go out there and you're you're working with other businesses now to help them implement EOS in their business. What would you say to people who are looking to potentially bring EOS into their business? And maybe they're hesitating and going, oh, you know, we're doing okay and everything's all right. Um, what would you say to them about what EOS can actually do for them? Well, the going through the proven process, the first thing that happens is you get really clear on your vision. That way, everybody in the organization, in the company, in the leadership team is going in the same direction. And there is tremendous benefit to that. The second thing that happens is that you start to become accountable and responsible. So you start to gain traction towards working on your vision. Because most entrepreneurs, as we know, sometimes we miss our potential. Although we have a great vision, we don't have the discipline and the accountability to get traction to make it happen. Mm-hmm. So vision, traction. And the last thing is what I mentioned that happened in my team, which was the health aspect, becoming an open, honest team that starts to walk cohesively. And I'll give you a great example. One of my managers knew we were going to close her restaurant. And all the way to the very end, she stayed fully engaged in the leadership team. There was full accountability, transparency, honesty. She knew it was coming and she was part of the solution and the closing. And she worked hard even after we closed the restaurant. And we've created a long life friendship, even though we're not working together anymore. And the skills and what she learned out of this process, she got a VP of operations position the day after we closed our restaurant. Yeah. So it's just a beautiful journey and it keeps on giving. Yeah. No, I completely agree. And I think that it is it is um, amazing what can be achieved to say even with a good business, it can still take it to the next level by instilling that thing. I think I always describe it as that the reason I loved it so much, I'm actually an entrepreneur myself. I'm a bit of a visionary in my own businesses. And I was always worried that by doing a proven process, I was going to somehow be constricted and not allowed to be the, the person that I am. But it gives you that framework, that structure, the discipline, the accountability without taking away that entrepreneurial spirit. And it also gives us visionaries a place to be in the business which is the visionary box and it talk you know it allows us to to really add value at that level without getting involved in the day-to-day running of the business and I think that is one of the things that EOS taught me is that it's, it is a framework it's a proven process but it's not going to restrict your entrepreneurial spirit because that's what we want that's what actually takes things forward and changes the world right that's exactly right. And and that framework, as you described it, creates a ground, a breeding ground for amazing conversations. Mm-hmm. And that's where the creativity, that's where the golden nuggets, that's where the breakthroughs are. And it creates transformation. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah. So I've got to ask, um, do you have a favorite EOS tool? I mean, they're, they're, they're all, they all have to work together, obviously, but do you have a favorite one that you think is just really um, makes a difference from day one? I think the accountability chart is mm. my favorite tool because it, it flips the paradigm. You know, I went to business school, you, you learn about org charts and all the little titles and, And that's not important. It's not important what your job description is or your job title is. What matters is what we get done for the greater good as a team. And the accountability chart strips all that away. It puts the business first. Where are we going in the next 12 months? What are the seats that are going to get us there? And then you start creating the roles inside of each of the seats. And then and only then you start to put people in those seats. And which people do you put there? You put the people that live your values. You put the right people in the right seats. You have to have both. And you put the people that are have the God-given talent and get it and want it and have the capacity to do an amazing job in that seat. And that's magic. And the other thing that happens, even like I was just speaking with an entrepreneurial company of two people. 
even when you're a small company, it starts to give you a roadmap that as you grow, you can get it right the first time. And I have to go backwards and have the hard conversations that sometimes you have to have when yeah. you don't have the right people in the right seats. I think you're spot on. I think often as we kind of grow from being in a, a one, two man band, uh, if we haven't done that thought, that thought process first off, then we end up just grabbing any kind of warm body that's around because they happen to be there as opposed to actually going, right, who is, shares our core values? And more importantly, the role that I'm bringing them in for, do they actually have the capacity to do it? Do they get it? Do they want it? And so I think yeah. even, as you said, as, even as a small team, you can do the accountability chart based on the next 12 months and it gives you a hiring plan it tells you where the next hire actually should be exactly exactly and it, this actually happened there brave in the company that we doubled in size in a couple of years mm -hmm. it's the same principle just at a different stage of a, of the life of cycle of the company it gives you a roadmap and you can get the hiring done right at the first place first time. to me that's much easier to do than to have conversations with people you love, but they're not performing because they're in the wrong seat or people that are performing, but they're not the right people. They don't have your values. And either way, you have to make a change. Mm. And I think you mentioned earlier, it also gives you a chance to see where people want to go in the organization as well. So by having a very clear um, understanding of what that future looks like, you get people like your manager who says, hey, I want to be an integrator into you know, whatever it might be. And then you can start to develop those people as a leader into the roles that they, they want to do in the future. Spot on. Yes. Thank you for highlighting that. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so, so the accountability chart is definitely, I mean, it's really quite unique to EOS in terms of the way that it actually um, you know, puts that structure together. I think what's important too is it's not set in stone, right? So a lot of organizational charts, it's like, you know, I remember working for a, an insurance company and also for a government organization. And, you know, I don't think the actual, the what do you call the one that's not accountability chart, the the company structure chart had changed in years. It was just, this is what we always have. Mm -hmm. Whereas with the accountability chart, you're always looking and saying, so what's changing in the business and what does the business require going forward? Um, yes. So it's not a set in stone document, is it? It is not. We actually customize it for our clients and we make it work for them. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you said earlier, the tool is there, but it's not constrictive. We're not trying to fit yeah. people's businesses into EOS. EOS is there to, to create a structure, a discipline, and accountability, so you can actually materialize the vision, realize the vision that, mm -hmm. uh, that you're after. Another thing that I, I want to mention is that when, when we were using that in, in one of my companies, the accountability chart, is it, it allowed, us, allowed us to see what's beyond the one year too. Mm -hmm. We would even do some forecasting and start to see in advance what our hiring plans need to look like. The other thing that it would do is that every time we had an issue, mm -hmm. we would ask who's accountable for that. And we would bring up our accountability chart and it caused us to realize sometimes that we had missed a role. Or perhaps over time, if the issue started to recurring, maybe we would need another seat that we didn't have there before. So using that lens to actually solve issues that you face on a weekly basis was very helpful. Hmm. I'm, I'm really keen to ask you because um, I know that in our business, we... We do use tools like technology tools to manage the whole EOS system, but we still actually have a printed out laminated double-sided version of our VTO that we print out every quarter and, and, and laminate again. So we've got a, a version of it. How did you keep that alive in your business? Because how many staff did you have or do you have in EVOS, I should say? Uh, EVOS was about 50, uh, but yep. where we specially, we, we use that specifically in another business that I'm part of and mm -hmm. we had about 35 people there and we were literally every time we were in a zoom call and mm -hmm. we're solving a problem we would bring the accountability chart up on the screen and we would look where in the accountability chart is this issue stemming from 
And is the issue with the fact that we haven't defined it properly or thought it through correctly? So that was something for the leadership team to set it up cor- right and then go back to yeah. the team and say, this is what we need to do going forward. Or was it that somebody wasn't performing? And mm-hmm. it really helped us to improve the accountability chart, customize it, make it our own. And also we brought it to life because we used it on a weekly basis. Mm. And similar with the VTO, did you have a, you know, a way of sharing that with the team? How did you do that? Oh, absolutely. We do that on a quarterly basis when we bring our entire team together. We look at where we've been last quarter, where we are now, where we're going in the next 90 days. We continually talk about the values and our core focus and our 10-year target. So everybody hears the message over and over and over again. It takes seven times at least, right, for somebody to remember right. something. And uh, in, in Greek, we have a saying that repetition is the mother of education. Um, so I like it. <laughs> yes. And um, so we do that quarterly. We also, again, try to bring these tools to life. So in that business, what we do, we celebrate every quarterly people that have lived their values and we acknowledge them publicly and um, yeah, so ce- celebrate those wins. Yeah, yeah, that sounds really good. I mean, that's, that's what we teach to our clients. It's so nice to hear that actually, you know, um, how that works in real life. Okay. So I just want to understand a little bit um, in terms of if you were, if there was a person listening on this call and perhaps they're going through a bit of a tough time and I'm just looking here at the saying that I wrote, you know, every setback leads you to a setup. <laughs> um, so you're going through a bit of a tough time. You're kind of going, oh, I don't know. I don't know what, what the future looks like or I just feel like I'm really stuck. I've hit a ceiling. I can't move past it. What would be your three top tips or advice you would give to those people? Mm. First, be calm quiet your mind down Mm. because you can't see the setup if there is noise in your head. So you almost have to quiet your mind's eye and start to observe because the answers are there. The setup is in front of us. We just have to see it, acknowledge it, call it out, but we have to quiet down the noise in order to do that. So, so that would be number one. Do you have any tip? Do you have any tips for that? Like, what do you do to quiet your mind? For me, it's walks with my dog. It's watching sunsets and sunrises. Is meditating. Is just having breaks, not not working around the clock. Just take you know, take breaks. Whether you need a day, a weekend, a month. (laughs) <laughs> it's, Again, it's absolutely true. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, the the Greeks they don't work very much. So I guess I, I have that a little bit in me. Um, yeah, I know. I'm a, I'm a hard worker because I love what I do. So I don't call it work. Mm. It's I'm, I'm living my passion. It's life. I've done it all my life. So I've never worked a day in my life. I guess in that regard. Um, yeah. So that's what I do to quiet my mind. Um, and I think it's I think it's really important. I mean, I'm I'm a very fast paced, fast moving person, but I, you know, the the walks that we have every morning with my dogs is my is my real quiet time. It's a bit of my thinking time. And yeah. yesterday I just took the day off because I was feeling feeling like I needed it. And I have to say, it's I think Gino describes it really well. If you can imagine a glass with sand in it, if you're continually moving, that water is murky. You can't see. It's only when you sort of take time out and you allow that water or the sand to settle that you get the clarity yes. of vision and I'm yes. feeling quite clear after a day off yesterday and so sometimes a day is all that it takes but it's kind of a breaking that pattern and going it's time to stop <laughs> that's great yes thank you for sharing that visual absolutely thank you yeah, yeah. okay so that's tip number one is yep clear that yeah. mind <laughs> yes the the other thing for me is just staying humble staying humble and oftentimes that how that translates is if you don't think you're the person with all the answers and you, you're curious and you start asking, you'll find answers and setups, breakthroughs with your team, with your 
colleagues, with your customers? The answers are there. You just have to ask. You just have to be curious to find them. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. You're absolutely right. We don't have to be the hero, right? As it's going back to your original analogy. Yes. <laughs> you don't have to be the hero. Correct. Yeah. yeah that's well, hero is cool. about the ego, um, yes. which leads to the third one, which is stay abundant. Stay abundant. There is enough out there and we just have to know and have the confidence that it's in front of us and we'll find our way. Um, we've been speaking with our, with our leadership team in terms of competition and mm. in the restaurant space, it's very competitive. As a matter of fact, in one of the locations that we're in, it's like almost like a food court. There's so many restaurants in the same food court. But once you start thinking of everybody else as cooperation and collaboration versus competition, mm -hmm. and you're coming from an abundant mindset, and then you want to be a blessing, you start being a blessing to others, you start being a blessing to your employees, you start being a blessing to your partners, the people you do business with, your vendors, how can you help? What can you do for them? How can you create value for others? That's the, the abundant mindset that I'm talking about. Yeah. And I feel that when you live in that space, abundance also comes to you. It's not because you're seeking it and doing it for that purpose, but it just happens like that. Yeah, yeah. you just attract the right things when you're doing the right thing yourself. <laughs> I mean, we are energy beings, right? Yeah. So, you attract that energy, I guess you can say, yes. It's, it's part of the reason why I love doing these podcasts um, because I, I love the people that come on here. I, I always take so much from them and I know that I'm also offering that value to other people too. And it's, it's yeah, as you said, energy. It just feels great to be on these calls. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful and you're a great host. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, we could probably talk for hours as I could do with all of my guests. Maybe yes. we will do. We'll sit and have a cup of coffee one day. Um, I actually grew up in Cyprus, by the way. I don't know if you knew that, but um, that was my original. My father not. was in the Air Force. Yeah, so I have to come. I have to go back to Cyprus and Greece one day. I haven't been back as an adult. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. I go every summer. Do you? So yeah? now, now you know somebody and you don't have to be a tourist. You can be a visitor. That's a big difference. I'll I love it. I love it. <laughs> so let's just talk a little bit about you now for a moment. So um, with your professional EOS implement hat on, what is your ideal client? Who do you love working with and why? Mm, thank you. Great question. The ideal client is an entrepreneurial company or a leadership team or entrepreneur or owner that has an entrepreneurial spirit. They want to grow. They're more afraid of status quo than they are of growing, but they do so in an open, honest, self-reflecting manner. That way we can really do the work and apply the tools and the disciplines. Uh, Size-wise, 10 to 250 employees. And, you know, it's, I, I, I've even worked with some Organ nonprofit organizations, which is not exactly the EOS model or ideal client, mm -hmm. but when they have an entrepreneurial spirit, yeah. nonprofit organizations are great too because they want to grow. As a matter of fact, I'm helping one right now, and it's oh, nice. very exciting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And is there a particular location that you like to work within? So I'm very committed to my my freedom and my time with my family. So I'd like to work with clients that are here in the Tampa Bay area uh, or within an hour's drive of Tampa Bay. But I also welcome clients that want to fly into Tampa Bay. It's a beautiful destination and location with lots to do. Great food. I'm a foodie, by the way. I love oh, yes. great food, <laughs> great yep. wine, great company. And um, yeah, so anybody that wants to come to Tampa or anybody who is in Tampa, I'd be happy to have a chat with them and see if we can transform their business. Perfect. And so how do they actually get hold of you? What's the best way to get hold of you? 
You can get a hold of me through LinkedIn. You can go to my EOS uh, website. Um, I'll post these things on, um, everything is posted on LinkedIn. Yeah. And we'll process. make sure that that link is also in the bottom of this podcast as well. Yeah, and uh, we can, I can provide my email. People can reach out to me via email. Yeah. I think I'm easy to Excellent. find. I think you are. <laughs> That's cool. yes. So two, two little sayings that I wrote down from this podcast, which I really, really loved. Um, so the Greek thing, the re repetition is the mother of education. I think that's absolutely fantastic because I think uh, definitely as entrepreneurs, we kind of feel like well, we've told you this once already. It's like, yep, guess what? You've got another six times to go if you're lucky. <laughs> it could be more. <laughs> you're so right, Deborah. I have sometimes people that come up to me. They're so frustrated that their employees or their reports are not doing it. And yeah. yeah. You've said it how many times? Three? Okay. Yeah. You got four, four more to, to go. go. <laughs> At least. At least. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true and the other one that I just absolutely love and I'm going to definitely steal this is like every setback leads you to a setup and I think that you know when we're going through challenging times it can be tough to see that but I speaking from my own experience I know that to be true every time something has gone you know potentially disastrously wrong something really good has come out of it and so I think it's really important we keep that in our mind uh, be resilient just just keep going um, things happen for a reason as long as you take the learnings from it it's always good Yes. Well yeah. said. Thank you. And I love, I loved your story. I loved listening to, you know, how you um, have, have grown the businesses you're involved in. And I think most importantly, I'm loving the fact that you're now taking that time out, working more in that coaching role for 10 hours a month, rather than the, the, the full time role. You've gone from the, the hero to the coach to the person who's, you know, and, and loving seeing the results that's bringing as well. So um, well done. Congratulations. Absolutely. Yes. And, uh, and allows me to pursue my passion, which is, you know, to help other entrepreneurs and other yeah. business owners so it's wonderful i hope your listeners didn't have too hard of a time listening to my greek accent but my wife told me when she met me if i lose the accent i'm done so i'm holding I'm on really to that accent we've been married 24 years <laughs> i'm holding on to it uh, to be fair, it's actually not too bad. I mean, um, I don't know how you've gone. Mine's a bit of a mixture of an accent, but we have we have listeners from all over the world. I'm pretty certain they're used to hearing different accents. <laughs> Wonderful. Hey, look, thank you again so much for your time. Pleasure to talk to you. Um, and we'll make sure all those details are in the bottom of this podcast for anybody who wants to talk to you. Thank you, Deborah. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much.